Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for end-of-life care and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so that we shift from not talking about dying to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live our lives at the end of our lives. And it's time to communicate about the kind of care we want and don't want for ourselves. We believe that the place for this to begin is not in the intensive care unit. So together, we can explore the various paths to life's ending. Together, we can make these difficult conversations easier. Together, we can make sure that our own wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed and respected. If you're ready to join us, we ask, navigate the journey. As you know, we cannot talk about the end of life options without exploring the legislative actions of medical aid and dying. Today's guest is Hawaii Senator Lorraine Inouye, not related to the deceased senator. She is an experienced legislator of 40 years, a 40-year commitment to public service as member of Hawaii's County Planning Commission, Big Island Mayor, member of the County Council, and twice state senator. The senator introduced the Senate bill on medical aid and dying. She introduced this measure last year in 2016, but it never heard in the Consumer Protection and Health Committees chaired by Roz Baker and the Judiciary Committee. Senator Inouye was one of several senators that voted for this bill in 2002, but it failed by three votes, just three votes. So, therefore, we have asked my dear, dear friend for 40 years to come back to talk to us about the bill and all that she's done over these last 40 years. So, Senator Baker, oh, oh my, what a mistake that is, and we don't get to edit. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> You're excused, Marsha. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> okay, so let's start. Let's talk about you and all that you have done over these years as, as public service, mm -hmm. and then your flowers. All right. Thank you, Marsha. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, it's just an honor, actually. We go way back, uh, but we also thank you for your contributions to our society in the state. And you're, you have been a very, very great model for many of us women in particular. Uh, however, I have dedicated my life to do the people's work, uh, particularly concentrating on the Hawaii Island, um, but having had the honor of uh, coming to Oahu and be a member of the State Senate. Um, having said that, I'm happy to be back here to return in the 2014 election, as my constituents did say they wanted me back and not to retire from <laughs> politics. And so, uh, again, we're, we are doing, uh, as far as I'm concerned, my lifelong dedication is doing the people's work. Well, now, as mayor of the Big Island, that's really a big island. And just to drive from one end to the other is a, a day's... So how do you reach all of your constituents? Well, during my mayor's term, um, as, as you did mention, the geography of the Big Island is so expansive. Um, however, that's a dedication that us politicians are committed to do. Whether you're going to drive over, it takes uh, two hours, uh, so 200 miles, uh, to reach the other side of the island in West Hawaii. However, I did make that commitment that I will do my best for 
Southwest uh, Hawaii as well. There were times that I did um, travel by helicopter. As you know, the county of Hawaii um, had a uh, emergency helicopter, but during times that I needed to be there on the other side of the island uh, at a so certain point of in time, as well as to meet my obligations for my schedule in East Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, and so there were times that I did have to do that. However, in case that there was an emergency that I pledged that the helicopter is to make that commitment first. So if they have to drop me off somewhere <laughs> on the highway or in the sugar plantations, and I'd like to talk about that because there was an there was a point in time that we ended up in the sugar plantation. Really? Uh, yes, because we had a warning. Getting back into Hilo, there was a warning light on the helicopter. So our the pilot was just. Uh, uh, did his duty and he says, Mayor, um, there is, uh, we're traveling over Waipio Valley and, and into Hanaka'a and God bless and thanks for the sugar plantations with areas that they kept like the roadways mm -hmm. and those roads in limbo was there for us. So says we're gonna land there's a spot right there and I says okay uh, I'm in your hands <laughs> and I just prayed a lot to the dear Lord well and the that island is so interesting because it's so different well there's so many what is it 11 different uh, weather zones on one island and you can quarter the island and then you'll have all the different climates let me share with you the difference when I was mayor in 1990 to 92 uh, as we are here in um, in 2000 um, that as senator um, the district of course is much less than the the entire island as mayor. Uh, however, my district is from right outside of Hilo, so if you look at the map and there's Kona, my district includes Saddle Road, the Daniel K. Inoue Highway, Mauna Kea Mountain, north. So we have North Kohala, we have parts of Kona past the airport. So it takes me uh, two and hours. Madame Pele. No, no, no. Madame I have Pelle, Mauna, not in your not in my district. That is in Puna. Well, okay. Yes, yes. But I have Mauna Kea. Okay. And astronomy mm -hmm. as well. And so, uh, and the Pohakaloa training oh. area, uh, the military camp, uh, PTA as we call it. And um, so, having said that, it's rather interesting because now that we talk about energy in our my role as chair of transportation and energy, is that um, we're talking about electric vehicles. Vehicles and uh, as far as I'm concerned, I can take advantage of it because we're not suited on the Hawaii Island with uh, with charging stations um, to the point where we may need it in different areas. So I would think with the tourism in Kona area and now the tourism because of Madame Pele that you would have someone would be interested in the stations, the charging stations. Oh yes, eventually it'll come and that's what we've been, we're working this year as well in our energy committee uh, moving forward with with many, many proposals before us and how we're going to place chargers and who's going to pay for it as well. However, uh, having having said that, it's, um, it's interesting to note that uh, you did mention I was on the planning commission yes. back in the 70s, and that's how I did. I started my political career as a young kid, I would say. <laughs> and, uh, however, I just wanted to share with the, the audience out there that uh, as a planning commissioner then, we did not have the resorts. So it started, and, and God bless the foresight of Governor Burns. He created the Queen Ka'ahumanu Highway to make it passable for all of us uh, to to have a good highway system between Kona and the west east side. Mm -hmm. And so there was no development. However, um, there were pro there were proposals to rezone the entire region from near where the Mauna Kea Beach Hotel is to 
the Kona area, South Kona. So I was on the commission of nine, maybe seven at that time, that rezoned the entire area into what we see today. And I call it the diamond in the rough. It is, it, it really is. And of course, with the Merry Monarch coming up soon, the whole world gets to see exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. So we have, um, during my lifetime, uh, serving as an elected official on Hawaii Island, um, there were things that we did before that I can look back and say, I did that. Exactly. After that big rezoning uh, on the Planning Commission, we did another thing that is today very beneficial to the employment and the shopping opportunities for East Hawaii. We did the rezoning so that what we have uh, at the Prince Kohio Mall, mm -hmm. uh, we have Walmart, and those rezonings happened during my time. So it's, uh, I, I'm glad, as I mentioned earlier, my role is to do the people's work, to make sure that we have job opportunities as well as, as the education system because we do have the East, we do have the University of Hawaii at Hilo, the Hilo campus. Uh, we have, now correct me if I'm wrong about the Hilo campus. I was told it's the only one that has the pharmacy program. Is that correct? Correct. And our first Hawaiian language program that it was implemented in our state. Wonderful. And you can receive your master's degree in Hawaiian language at our campus. When I was at the university, uh, Hawaiian was taught in the foreign language department. Now that's been a long time, but yes. that was in the foreign language department. That was... And at Manoa. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So so we've come a long way. And I invite all of those out there, please come to see that building. It's just a beautiful building by itself, not connected to the Hilo campus. And it was designed uh, by uh, uh, one of our architects who is from Hilo, but has his office on Oahu. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, we're proud of. Now, I remember what was the storm? Oh, the hurricane. And hurricane Isel in yes. 2000, uh, two years ago. Two years ago. 2014. And your plantation, your, your flowers, your... Yes, we do have, uh, my husband owns Floral Resources Hawaii. He has uh, several acres, about 40 acres. I personally own, I, I have no uh, financial um, obligations to uh, my husband's uh, farms, but I do have a 10 acre uh, and theorem farm as well uh, that I call Aloha Blooms. And my husband is my partner. I'm the president though. Oh good. However, uh, it's a joint, joint uh, uh, venture, joint venture. However, during ICEL, our farms uh, experienced 80% um, damages by ICEL, and uh, we're still looking for our inventory to market the flowers. It's a slow pro process, but, you know, farming is very challenging. Yeah. So how often do you get back there? Um, I, I'm here and committed to be here as senator uh, for the week. However, as we move towards our process um, before crossover time uh, in uh, in late February and, and March, um, I sometimes stay here Saturdays, go home the weekends, and at times may not be able to go home. Mm -hmm. And um, but my commitment is here. I have a wonderful husband who's committed to be my, who has been very supportive in the years that we've been married. Oh, that's great. And the name of your farm again? Uh, my farm is Aloha Blooms, okay. Inc. Now, we have to take yes. a break. And when we come back, we want to talk about the legislation, okay? We'll be happy to. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I serve as Senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our healthcare system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. 
Okay, I'm here with Brent Obergaard of the Faculty of the School of Journalism in the Department of Communications at UH Manoa. We've had a number of shows. We have a movable feast going on, and we talk about journalism, we talk about language, we talk about communication in general, and we talk about the effect of that on the country and on individual people. Brent, it's so good to, to be able to discuss this with you in our movable feast. Oh, it's my pleasure. This is a great opportunity. You'll have to come back again and again, okay, deal? Uh, that's the deal. Brett Opergott, <laughs> I'm Jay Fidel. We care about everything. Thanks. Hi, we're back with Senator Inouye, and we are going to, we've, she's taken us on this wonderful tour of the Big Island. And I must say, if you haven't been, you must be. I, I have enjoyed it so much. Now, we're going to talk about your legislation, and it is, let me get the correct title here. Um, what is the correct title? Okay, it's relating to Re aid in, in dying. dying. Okay, and um, for all of you that may not know, it is about medical aid in dying for a terminally ill patient who has been certified that they have less than six months to live mm -hmm and that this is their choice that they get to choose and the doctor would write a prescription and they have to take it themselves. The doctor does not administer this. This is not mm -hmm. getting rid of grandma kind of thing. And so um, I'd like for you to tell us more about the bill, what it says, what it does not mm -hmm. say, and where are we in the process? Okay, um, I do want to add, Marcia, um, recognizing that my bill, Senate Bill uh, 357, also has another measure uh, that's uh, authored and introduced by Senator uh, Rhodes. And his bill is Senate Bill 1129. Um, and as you did mention, um, uh, I've had uh, been involved with this legislation, as you mentioned, uh, and my interest uh, in legislation when I first um, started in the uh, early uh, 2000. I, I was a senator elected in 1998, and 1999 was my first session. However, um, having noticed that we did, there, were, there was a bill with regards to the same issue, and I was very active that time to ensure that the my colleagues and those at that time had an opportunity to discuss that issue. Um, however, the chair of health uh, refused to hear the, bit, the bill, and so um, they, we needed to somehow force the chair, which we rarely want to do, but because of the issue and those in the communities that wanted us and our constituents to address something that they would like to make personal decisions for their end of life. And so there were 13 of us and maybe even more had signed a petition to make sure that we can pull that bill out of the chair's committee so that we can all make sure that we want the bill heard. And that's the challenging times we had. And of course, once it went on the floor, we lost by three votes. However, over time, um, I've, uh, I've had taken care of uh, family and uh, personal friends who had, um, uh, you know, the, not an opportunity, but as their time went by, were um, experiencing uh, ill health. And so I've personally uh, watched them, including my father-in-law, who supported the measure in 2002 and said, if I have cancer or something, I just want the family to know that I don't want to live through uh, you know, uh, the pain and suffering. And um, so he says, my daughter-in-law, will you please make sure that this you continue to do your work? And so hence, um, uh, we also, uh, and I was more encouraged when Governor Brown uh, uh, last year or the year before decided he's going to join uh, the other states like Oregon, Washington, Montana, and Vermont. That, uh, and he did not support the measure. 
and yeah. he would clarify that when he signed it. He says, however, we need to make sure that the people have a choice, mm -hmm. and it's not my choice to make decisions for them. And so I was very encouraged, and again, that's why I introduced last year's bill. However, uh, we're here today, and I'm so happy in my discussions just to bring up and up to date uh, as to what's happening at the legislature and the discussions on SB 357 and SB 1129. Uh, Senator Baker uh, has uh, told me uh, she did take a poll amongst all of us, uh, and to also honor the polls that all of you out there uh, uh, did take recently that there are 80% of, of our Hawaii residents support the measure. And so uh, she did take a poll and she will be hearing this measure. Uh, and she's looking at um, uh, putting on the agenda SB 1129 on Senator Rhodes' bill. However, the discussions that I hope that the community and people who want to see us make decisions this year, please come and support Senator Baker's uh, bills that she is going to um, introduce and um, on her agenda. And Marsha, I know you're going to lead the charge <laughs> with our dear friend, uh, Scott Foster, who I've been so blessed to know for many years. Uh, and we want participation. We want people to come out and please send in your testimonies in support. Give the, the senator and her committee an opportunity to hear from your experiences out there and to ensure that something passes for the first time and make sure that we have good discussions and that it passes the Senate. Make sure that there's something that goes over to the House and have their discussions. Now, this is not a guarantee oh. because we know, well, we know that we need no two houses <laughs> yeah. to pass a measure. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we request that all of you out there in the listening audience and those uh, viewing this um, uh, wonderful program and Marsha, with your encouragement and the group out there, uh, please send in your testimonies, support the bills. Now, I'm, the, the governor, I, uh, Ige, was a member of the Senate, and you knew him well. What do you think? Now, I know you don't know where he is, but what do you think? I can't remember uh, how his vote was. Maybe you don't. I you, don't. You know, but they I were. I don't know. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, however, I think the governor at this point in time will address if there's any bills that c will come before him. Um, I know he probably would think uh, the same as we all do, uh, and I would encourage and. Uh, we'll have some discussions uh, with him. I'm sure Senator Baker will, uh, and many of us who want to see a measure at least supported by the governor. Having said that, in the event that he vetoes, I am sure if it goes on his desk that we will be able to override. Oh, wow. We've, we've got that much support. Exactly. So there is an opportunity that the legislature jointly will go back in session in case the governor vetoes, which I, I have a personal feeling that he would support the legislation that would be before him. Well, um, I talked, we did Think Tech yesterday live from the Capitol, and we talked to the Speaker of the House because he introduced the bill on the House side, and he feels really confident about it. I feel conf confident good. as well. Oh, great. Yes. And I, I'm, I'm so happy that our local newspaper on the Hawaii Island did a, a great oh, article. beautiful. And I've had numerous emails and phone calls. And people who uh, I have not uh, heard of for years or, or people throughout the island, not only my district, just thanking us uh, for bringing this matter up. Uh, and it, it's just an opportunity. Matter of fact, one, a couple, um, my friends, 
Karen Sandy in my district from Waimea, and uh, she was the first to email me, and she sent me an email yesterday saying, my husband and I are going to Oahu um, yesterday. We'll be here till Friday and uh, for doctor's appointments. However, if there's anything that I can do or come and lobby, uh, please, um, we want to help. And so, but I did tell her it's not on the agenda yet, so don't reschedule your uh, appointments with doctors. What, how long does it take before it's on the agenda? Okay, um, it has to be heard before Thursday. That's tomorrow? Uh, Thursday next week. Oh. Yes, so she has time. So if it hasn't been posted, now they are measures that probably she could have put a put a posting yesterday for Friday. If, if it's not on the Friday calendar, then um, it'll be probably heard uh, any time from Monday to Thursday the least, mm -hmm. uh, Thursday morning. I'm sure she would want to do it sooner, like Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. So she has hearings for three days. Okay. Well, uh, four days, actually, before we deck the bills. I think, uh, of course, I'm a romantic, a hopeless romantic. So I would like to see it on Valentine's Day so we could say this is a oh, gift to the Oh, you know, that a, you're a oh, loving gift I have to chicken to skins, Marsha, when you say that. the legislature. But I, like I, I said, I'm a hopeless romantic, so. Exactly, <laughs> but I, I needed to share with you that, and I think Scott remembers the gentleman, uh, and that's why in 2002, I remember there was an elderly person who lived here on Oahu that lobbied us um, to hear that bill in 2002. And I'm getting kind of teary because when we did the vote in the chamber, the old elderly man who was ill stood up and he was looking at us in the gallery for all of us to take the vote. And I remember one of us did, I, I could have been the person, but I can't remember, who did mention uh, him in the gallery. He was by himself, uh, and he knew his time was coming. And I, he was introduced, and he stood up. And it was such um, a, a, an uh, emotional time. So we were trying to encourage our, vo our colleagues to please give us at least three more votes. It failed, but I, he must be looking at us today and saying thank you. And um, I, I, I just feel for him today. So if it happens on Valentine's Day, I want to have someone give me the gentleman's name so we can make a dedication to him when we pass the bill. Thank you, thank you. We will find his name. Okay. Thank you so much for spending this time with us and hope you'll come back. I will. <laughs> <laughs> when the bill passes, you'll yes, come back. I, 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 and I'll bring Senator Baker. Is yes. that okay? Yes, tell, yes. Her, tell her I'm so sorry. <laughs> and, and Senator Agaron because yes. he's the Judiciary Chair. Okay. Because Great. there are two key people. Okay. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure spending this time with you. I love it. It's my pleasure.